you have to prove that no matter how bleak things look in the world, and no matter how much pain, no matter how much suffering, no matter how much injustice there is in America, there is always hope to be had in the birth of and in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you're able to spend this Christmas with your family, cherish the moment. Because on Saturday, there will be a lot of families who are apart. A separation because of political ideology. A spiritual or religious falling out. Fear from propaganda surrounding a virus. Or because they have family members rotting as political prisoners in the Biden gulag. And today, we want to speak to one of those political prisoners. Jeremy Brown won't be seeing his five daughters this Christmas because he's being detained in the Pinellas County Jail without bail over a misdemeanor charge. Jeremy never knew his father, so he was raised by his grandfather, a World War II veteran, instead. That grandfather raised Jeremy to revere this country and its constitution. Jeremy entered the JROTC program at age 15. At 18, he enlisted in the U.S. Army. He spent three years as a Ranger and 17 years as a Green Beret. He did two tours in Iraq and two more in Afghanistan. He was awarded two Bronze Stars and retired from the service in 2012 after two full decades. In November of last year, Jeremy joined the Oath Keepers. He traveled to the Capitol on January 6th to provide security for a speaker and his mother at the Stop the Steal rally. Jeremy did not go inside the Capitol. Let me be clear. Jeremy Brown did not step one foot inside the Capitol building, but a full nine months later, after the Capitol incident, the feds arrested him for trespassing. As we mentioned a moment ago, Jeremy did not step a foot into the Capitol. And that's a misdemeanor charge, but they sent 15 to 20 vehicles from the FBI, DHS, ATF, and local cops to spend five and a half hours searching Jeremy's home and RV trailer. You have to ask yourself, why would they do that exactly? They would do that because the FBI is corrupt to the core. They would do it to be cruel. There's been a lot of that from the feds since the 2016 election. It's why half of the FBI showed up to arrest Roger Stone after giving CNN a tip so they could film it and put it all over television. But the authorities also had a special reason to punish Jeremy Brown. In December of 2020, just days before the January 6th incident, the FBI approached Jeremy Brown and tried to recruit him as an informant. Jeremy recorded the whole conversation with permission, and then he refused their offer. In March, he exposed what the FBI had attempted to do. Who knows? If Jeremy had accepted the FBI's offer, he might have been one of those suspiciously unindicted actors at the Capitol on January 6th. Revolver News just exposed a bunch more of them last weekend. But to his credit, Jeremy Brown did not accept the offer from the corrupt FBI. And now the Biden deep state is punishing Jeremy Brown for that, just like other state police have in other dictatorships. Jeremy Brown is calling into this show from the Pinellas County Jail, and we want to get right to him. He joins us now. Jeremy, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, and we're praying for you. Well, um, thank you, Mr. Peters. Uh, I'm actually a, a big fan of yours, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Okay, great. Um, so I'd like to start off with a Bible verse that's basically going to sum up uh, what, what we're facing here in America, and it's from Proverbs 21. It was part of my Bible reading yesterday. It is, the violence of the wicked sweeps them away because they refuse to act justly. And you say that the, uh, yeah, it is hard for me to be in here uh, facing this, this Christmas holiday confinement, but I will tell you that patriots like you and patriots like somebody that you all know uh, by name, uh, and that is the mother of Ashley Babbitt sent me a personal letter yesterday. Uh, and when I, when 
when I read that, and it was a brief letter, but, but reading it uh, brought tears to my eyes and it made me realize that there's a reason why I'm in here. And that reason is to expose, like you said, the corrupt FBI and the corrupt government. This administration and all previous administrations that have taken part in the corruption that is trying to bring down this great republic. And I will do everything that I, in my power, and I've already accepted a life sentence in my own mind uh, in order to bring all the facts of my case as well as the cases of hundreds of other political prisoners to the public in a public trial. And the FBI will not be able to bribe me with some, some bogus plea deal. Uh, I am taking this fight to them, and, and there's no way they're going to escape now. They, they've fallen into the trap of justice. So there's a lot of people, a lot of attorneys, a lot of encouragement for political prisoners charged with misdemeanors or otherwise in relation to this January 6th event. There's a lot of pressure for you to take a plea deal. Why is it that you have decided that you're not going to do that? You know, I've decided I'm not going to do that because I know that strategy and I know that tactic. And what that tactic is, is they arrest you on some bogus charge, they do a search warrant, they find other reasons to charge you with more, uh, more uh, heinous crimes, uh, like the list of felonies that came out of my five-hour-long search warrant, and then they threaten you with serious prison time, as the prosecutor refers to it as, uh, in an attempt to uh, extort uh, and, and basically scare you into accepting a plea for some lesser charge, which will sound basically uh, no big deal, like, you know, trespassing. And then what they'll do is they will seal that charge, and then they will run to their friends in the media, and they will claim another person pleads guilty to the insurrection of January 6th. Uh, to feed their false narrative. And I don't blame those that have accepted those plea deal, deals because it is, it is a trick. It is an evil trick. They didn't realize what they were, that the, what they were being exposed to. And rather than, than stand on their constitutional rights, all they wanted to do was get out of jail and spend time with their family. But unfortunately for this government, they spent millions of dollars to train me to survive and to endure way worse conditions than what I'm in now and I'm going to use that training, uh, and I'm going to turn it against them. So, so their tactic of overcharge and then uh, extort you into pleading to a lesser charge so they can use it in their false narrative will not work on me. Well, I just want to tell you that I commend you for that bravery. and.